uh, today we are announcing uh, a couple of uh, new uh, solutions and capabilities, uh, generation three out of bands, and I'm gonna explain what that is. And also a zero pain ecosystem. So the elements that go around building uh, a pain-free uh, ecosystem of products that actually work uh, well to reduce downtime. Uh, these solutions have been developed with, uh, with the world tech giants, right? So that's why we put it and it's been developed in the last uh, seven years or so. And uh, we are having this opportunity to uh, tell you all about it so that um, you can take advantage of all this exciting technology that uh, the team has put together. So at ZPE Systems, you know, our journey started by delivering end-to-end -end data center infrastructure automation at scale, you know, million node plus scale. And that's actually the, the reason that ZPE uh, came about is solutions that would scale to those um, uh, size um, and really address all of the needs of customers that didn't exist. And it's a combination of hardware, uh, uh, serial consoles, software, SaaS offerings, it's, it's a complete solution that started in the data center. And then by customer demand, the solution was expanded to address the needs at the edge of the network, right? So we, we know all about uh, things being pushed to the edges of the network for critical infrastructure. And so I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Arnaldo, our uh, CEO and uh, co-founder to tell you a little bit about the journey of the company and take you through some of the customers. Hello everyone, this is Arnaldo Zimmerman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of ZP Systems. ZP was uh, founded in 2013. Um, we were very lucky here in Bay Area, California, and we were very lucky to uh, bring uh, along with us a, a team of um, specialists in out of band who has been working with us together in multiple initiatives, previous companies and, and um, activities around the out of band. And it's fair to say that that team has been uh, delivering right, the most of what we see today in out of band, what it features that uh, we see in out of band um, being used today. Uh, so so it's, um, they continue doing innovation here at ZP, is, as, as Karush mentioned, uh, we develop hardware, software, right, and applications for the cloud. We have been very successful deploying um, products at the data center at the edge and we are now focusing our Gen 3 out of band automation to address right, the challenges of deploying with, um, with the automation tools at the edge to simplify that deployment at the edge. Uh, let's talk about our um, customers, uh, Krush. So here's a, um, a simplified uh, list of uh, customers just to, to get give you an idea of um, our reach right, in different segments of the, the market. Right? Uh, these companies are deploying our products around the world, uh, thousands of them right, using automation at scale with our tools that we provide and successfully. And so for example, six of the top 10 uh, global tech giants are customers of ZP deploying thousands of boxes every, every year. Um, including social media companies, a changing company, and Amazon being one of them. Um, Amazon uses our modular um, box right, with um, their Dockerized application on top of it. They call the Seed of Life. Right? And that application, what it does is uh, when our box uh, boot up, uh, that application goes and discover all the, the IT devices in their fulfillment centers in their remote location and through the, the platform, they configure provision and then later maintain and manage uh, the, their uh, sites right, um, all automated. So hopefully we have, um, a, we will cover this uh, through our uh, demonstration today. So um, with that, right, um, I, I hope you guys enjoy our presentation right, uh, covering our zero pain ecosystem and our uh, new generation, third generation of um, uh, automation tools. And that this is really what got me excited uh, about uh, ZP is uh, just the, uh, the, the logos that you see up there and the deployments are, are quite amazing. So now let's, in this section, I'm just gonna talk about the, the problems that um, we see uh, in the industry and um, you know, that, that need that exists. 
uh, I've been uh, doing product management for about 20 uh, years and uh, all of those 20 years actually have been in security and networking. And uh, even more, much more recently, we've been hearing all of these um, uh, news uh, articles about uh, problems reported from data centers going down. Uh, you know, many of people have been affected, it's become a household thing. Uh, service disruptions. And even that last one surprised me. Uh, this is a press release that Gardner put out that uh, says Gardner predicts that by 2025, cyber attackers will have weaponized operational technology environments to successfully harm or kill humans. You know, what a headline. Uh, in fact, this actually has happened already, um, right? Uh, uh, water uh, treatment facility in Florida has uh, been taken over, you know, and uh, chlorine levels uh, increased by 10,000 times. So why did all, all these things exist with all these different uh, companies, you know, these uh, tech giants that are out there, security uh, tools that are being uh, made better and better? What is the problem, right? Why is this problem not being solved? And in fact, the, the stats down there basically says it's just gonna become worse in the future. It's not gonna become better. So uh, just to put this in three different buckets, one is obviously this lack of reliability and availability that, um, we all need to be worried about, especially as we rely on technology to in our daily lives. The other aspect that um, comes in to uh, cause issues is that there's just not enough people around or not enough expertise to run all of these tools, right? It's a, it's a, a fairly complicated set of technologies. And then there is this lack of holistic security. And so I basically just double clicked on each one to see what is the you know, component of reliability and so technology is complex cost is a challenge people can't buy everything on the human side lack of expertise but in the edge of the network there's obviously a lack of remote help agility human error actually happens to be a very large uh, portion of uh, the problem here and then security right so security is uh, not just about deploying a firewall or other tools but it's about keeping them up to date deploying them correctly so uh, a lot of the customers that uh, we see have issues is because, or ask us for our solution is because they don't want to deploy uh, solutions that have old OS or not patched quickly enough uh, and uh, just don't interoperate well with other systems, right? So everything looks good on paper. What once it goes down to being vetted in a deployment, that's where um, customers say, okay, we actually need a better solution. <clears throat> I, uh, took this uh, slide out of a Gartner uh, deck that basically says the solution to all of this. I, I felt like this was the, you know, the simplest way to, uh, to communicate it as Gartner does. It's the best way to solve these problems is to build a programmable infrastructure through orchestration, right? Easy to say, hard to do. Uh, the components are at the core, everything in the infrastructure needs to be programmable so that you could actually orchestrate it from edge to core to data center to hybrid, any, you know, anywhere that you have stuff needs to be programmable. The second part is that the, all of these components needs to be run a, as, uh, as code so that you could actually instruct it to do something. And then a layer of provisioning so that you can operate the services or the outcome versus the individual components and type commands in, right? So this is what the destination looks like. And this is a slide from that working group where uh, from a real customer. So uh, Onag actually has customers that pose their challenges and the working group has to solve it. And this is a SD-WAN deployment. So it's about a large um, customer, uh, a service provider that uh, wants to automate the SD-WAN deployment. And the process of uh, wanting to bring up a branch to FedEx shipping the units to the tickets being generated and uh, in this case, the Meraki uh, equipment being um, put, uh, shipped, plugged in, and then provisioned, right? So that's the success path is that green path. Uh, the challenge and the reason that we were brought in is that if any part of this automation uh, doesn't work, the entire thing doesn't work. So in, in the example here, this Meraki doesn't uh, reboot or upgrade all the time. You know, if you got a thousand branches and two of them don't come back alive after upgrade or after configuration issue, what do you do? You got to roll the truck, right? <laughs> so, uh, so the whole um, ask of us, and you'll see this in the use case, is to uh, make sure that there is, just like the old telecom days, there is an out-of-band um, service that can have its hooks into all of the pieces of the gear and can recover everything, right? And that's what um, uh, we get pulled in to do, and that's what we do. 
okay. So that's what brought me to actually categorize existing solutions that uh, people have access to and really what the ask of the customers are to us. And uh, that's what uh, this category of Gen 3 out of band to enable net DevOps and <clears throat> infrastructure automation is about. So this Gen 1 products, I think you're familiar with the names, is mainly to be able to access equipment remotely, right? The second one is to be able to, the second category, the Gen 2 category, is to have more capability to be able to run uh, troubleshooting tools, to be able to do a little bit more, run scripts at the edges, but to actually do complete end-to-end -end automation, uh, quite a few things need to be there. One is that the infrastructure needs to be able to work uh, uh, with an auto orchestration platform, right? So that you can actually instruct it to do something. The second one is that with respect to security, once, you've, once this equipment is in charge of your infrastructure, security becomes ultra important, right? Because any, um, anything you ask it uh, to do, uh, it will do. And then if an adversary takes it over, then uh, you know, your infrastructure can be owned really easily. So many of the customers actually want uh, a zero trust hardware modern OS that's patched if this log 4J vulnerability comes out, immediate fixes. The other one is that it needs to be open, right? Not every company ships everything. So if you want to do end-to-end -to -end, uh, and people have all of these disparate technologies, each piece uh, that is in a customer's network needs to be automatable. And so having an open, um, friendly environment that you, you, uh, these equipment can talk to each other is really necessary. Obviously, simplicity, visibility, and getting to that AI ops are all um, part of this package. So a Gen 3 out of band, and that's what I wanted to categorize here, is about this end-to-end -end automation of the infrastructure and all the elements that go into building that compared to the solutions that exist today. <clears throat> the next thing that I wanted to introduce is the ecosystem, right? Um, what we have found through these deployments is that the, the need out there from a customer is to obviously be able to get their, um, get to that end goal of end-to-end uh, -end automation. But there is, um, you know, from the, from the hardware elements, there's different power supplies there. There are different switches there. There are different orchestration platforms. Somebody's using Docker, somebody's using Python, somebody wants to use Ansible. So there needs to be a ecosystem that just works uh, in a friendly way. And that's what we call the zero pain ecosystem. So ZPE, some people ask, what does ZPE stand for? ZPE as a company uh, stands for the zero point energy, which is the lowest state of energy. And really the zero pain ecosystem is the realization of how do you get there, right? So it's about an open ecosystem that everybody gets to uh, securely connect to everybody else such that that end-to-end -end automation is uh, realized. And we are um, you know, participating in working groups to uh, hook this thing up together and really deliver on our promise. So at the, uh, you know, at, in these last slides, what I wanted to present is the, the three pillars of our, uh, uh, of our solution. Uh, we started, as I mentioned, in the data center with uh, large scale serial consoles, um, you know, 96 port serial consoles, we enabled the automation there. The ask from the customers was to take that same um, capability move it to the edges of the network for their critical infrastructure, which is what I'll be talking about today. And then we also have been asked to do a consolidation, which is about taking all of those out-of-band features, but also doing in-band. Um, and uh, I'll, I hope to have a chance to go into more depth in a future presentation. The products that make this um, uh, come to life is the, uh, for data center is our uh, node grid serial consoles, switches, management systems, and at the bottom, you also see sensors and actuators. On the right-hand side, you see the remote and uh, branch edge offering, which does the same automation, but a different set of hardware is needed to do that, managed by ZPE Cloud. And then last slide here in this section, this first section, this is about new since our last presentation about four months ago. We've introduced uh, a new uh, serial, uh, a new service router platform called the Hive. Uh, if you look at the specs there, this is actually a really powerful device. It's, uh, it's pretty compact. I actually have one here. I'll, uh, I'll show it since I... So it's a, it's a pretty compact device um, that we've introduced. 10 gig interfaces, 4G, 5G built in, four core Intel, 
16 gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi 6, 128 gigs of storage. So I'm not sure what else you can ask for. And then you can just put um, Docker's VM and our own software on top. So really powerful box for consolidation. SD-WAN is the other app. And then many new features also have been added in NoteGrid uh, 5.4, which just released uh, a few months ago.